All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion on perpendicular lines. Specifically, this is the proof of the perpendicular transversal theorem. Now, let me preface this first and foremost. I've seen a couple different proofs for this theorem, some in my opinion that are better than others. I think a lot of people when they prove this theorem, there are some little missing pieces based on an assumption that certain angles are right angles. So if you, if you look around at different proofs of this theorem, you may see a couple different ways than I personally have. And in my opinion, I'm being a little bit more safe than sorry as a little bit more of an extensive approach here, okay? I don't want to miss anything out. I don't want to make any assumptions on things. I'm going to take a little bit of longer approach than you may see in some other individuals' proofs. So let's take a look here. What do we know? Well, what we know is that J is perpendicular to H. So we know that J is perpendicular to H and that H is parallel to K. And the goal is going to be, can we prove that J is also perpendicular to K. Well, let's, let's take into account what it actually means, okay? You gotta ask yourself, what does it mean for J to be perpendicular to H? It means that every single angle that is formed by this perpendicular intersection is a right angle. I'm gonna go ahead and put my angle two. I'm gonna say that angle two is right. Again, what told me that? definition of perpendicular lines is what filled me in. What does it mean to be a right angle? Well, it means that the measure of angle 2 equals 90 degrees. Again, this is what our definition of right angles tells me. So why do I take it to this step? Is because H and K are parallel. So what does that mean? It means that corresponding or alternate interior or alternate exterior angles are congruent to one another. So what this tells me is that angle 2 is congruent to its corresponding angle, angle 6. Corresponding angles theorem. All right. So what does it mean to be congruent to one another? Well, it means that they are equal in measure. And this is where it may get a little bit more extensive than some other proofs, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to be more safe than sorry. The measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 6 because of the definition of congruent angles. Well, if 2 equals 6, but 2 also equals 90, that means that the measure of 6 is also 90 degrees. And again, transitive property will tell us this. Transitive property of equality, because I'm using equal signs. Well, since the measure of angle 6 is 90 degrees, that means angle 6 is right. Once again, definition of congruent angles. Why is this important? It's because now, if angle 6 is right, by definition, J is then perpendicular to K. Definition of perpendicular lines. And this is where I think it's super important. Be careful. Perpendicular lines say they form a right angle. It does not say they equal 90 degrees. So this is where I think a lot of people maybe make a little bit of a mistake while they're doing this because they go from 90 to perpendicular, but in my opinion, I think we need to go from 90 to right and then use that concept to show that they are perpendicular to one another.